I'm John Mercurio. Up next on Hotline TV, we've got some Senate predictions. Stay tuned. We see parents who dream big of honor students and artists. By supporting programs that help children learn, we help parents watch their dreams come true. From the Watergate Building in Washington, this is Hotline TV. Now, here are Hotline Editors, Quinn McCord, and John Mercurio. It's Wednesday, everyone. I'm John Mercurio, and today we have Quinn McCord, the Hotline Senate Gov State Editor, here to help us out. Quinn, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Appreciate it. Say hello to everybody. Say hi to your mom. Hello. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. All right, that's enough of that. Quinn, I wanted to ask, there's a lot of talk about vulnerable Senate seats in Oregon, in North Carolina, in South Dakota, a couple other states, um, but there are no actual challengers yet. Is that pretty much correct, or is there, are there actually people out there we're still talking, we're not, we're not really hearing about? You know, that's pretty much the case. Do you realize right now, I mean, we've joked about how boring this Senate cycle can be, but right now there are only two races that actually have two challengers. Give them to me. Colorado and Minnesota. Right. Everything else, and those are all. I mean, obviously, the the, the uh, there will the be Colorado others. is an open seat, and the Minnesota is a uh, is, uh, is one that sort of Democrats have been targeting for a long time. Yeah, and they have sort of a celebrity candidate out there, so that was, I think, you know, an easier thing. Um, I don't want to go much further in this show before we talk about your tie because I know oh. it has special political significance for our viewers, and it might take five minutes to explain it. Well, this is my famed Metro Map tie. Indeed, I, I really have trouble finding my way around D.C. But, you know, this sort of symbolizes, I wear this on the show, to, to tell you that we're giving you both inside and outside the Beltway That's analysis. exactly right. That's deep and eloquent. That's what people want here. And simple. But it also has the blue and the red, I think, which reflects sort of the Democrat and the Republican uh, yeah. messages that uh, people are trying to, I think, in, get across. In this, green, these the days. campaign money. Indeed. Indeed. You know. Indeed. Um, so, yeah, it's got everything. It does. It's got a lot of stuff going on there. All right, back to the Senate. Okay. Um, what are the races other than the ones that we've talked about? where you think ultimately we could end up seeing, uh, you know, strong competition? Well, you know, we're pretty sure Tom Allen's going to run in Maine. Mm -hmm. You know, that's going to be a marquee race. Um, Louisiana, you know, some of these races we talked about, Oregon, Louisiana, they should be vulnerable. The parties keep talking them up. But, but where are the challengers? Well, Louisiana know? is one of those races. It never, nothing actually develops until so late in the cycle. Yeah. They have an incredibly late and they've governor's race. deadline. They've got a governor's race yeah. they've got to focus on first. The possibility of Senator, former Senator John Bro getting into that race, yeah. uh, you know, being a big deal. Um, but uh, but the, uh, the other one you mentioned, Maine, Olympia Snow is one of the, and Susan Collins, uh, you know, obviously Olympia Snow survived last time. Susan Collins. Um, the, the sort of the, the, the rare bastion of Republican, uh, of safe Republicans in New England. The rest of Republicans in New England got wiped out in 06. Do Democrats really have a chance in 08 against, uh, against uh, Susan Collins? Oh, sure they do. I mean, I mean, Democrats will say, oh, this could be another Rhode Island, you know, like Lincoln Chafee he was brought down as a blue state. But let's be honest, I mean, you know, Maine is nowhere near as Democratic a state as Rhode Island was. Um, Collins is probably better liked, you know, more of a social person than um, like a Chafee was. But she's also much more conservative, I think, than Chafee was, and she's much more conservative, at least her voting record is, than Olympia Snow. She is, That's but why she's, she's always been more of a target, I think, of the of the Democrats. But she still falls into the category of a very non-threatening Republican. You know, no one goes to bed at night scared that Susan Collins is going to come into their room and catch them to death, you know. You don't know that for sure. You don't know that for well, sure. Oh, you're right. I mean, Honestly, you, that, that's anecdotal. That's what you're giving us. I, we, we want facts here on Hotline I, I think TV. some polls have shown that, you know, are you afraid of Susan Collins coming in and murdering you in your sleep? That's a lot of truthiness. That's a lot of truthy <laughs> facties. Um, um, sort so, of a Connie Morello Republican, you might, you, yes, might, you might call her. Yes, Connie uh, Morello. Betty Cronkey Republican. Back Betty Cronkey, because we're both from Montgomery County. That's a Montgomery County Councilwoman, Betty Ann Cronkey. Yes, unfortunately passed away several years ago. Yes, but Connie Morello is still alive. She is indeed, absolutely, and um, living in Paris. I believe she is. And I think we'll just leave it on Connie Morello tonight. Today, that'll do it for today's show. We'll see you tomorrow on Hotline TV. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you, Quinn McCord, uh, for volunteering your time. I'm always happy to come here, John. Excellent. We're always happy to have you.